friend of mine posted a tutorial on Facebook uh, about creating cartoony motion blur arms. Um, but it was a little inefficient. It was posted by a guy on Vimeo, I think. Uh, his name was CJ. Um, it was actually a really good idea. But his execution could use a little refinement. So I'll, I sort of quickly went through and made my own version of it. And so you can actually see it here. So it pretty much works exactly like his did. And even uses some of the setup. Or at least some of the basic setup. But I just refined some of the finer points of controlling it. So we've actually got three separate arms or separate pieces of uh, arm geo and they each have a different shader on them for the transparency. So let me show you how to set this up. Uh, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose faces. I'm going to select the arm pretty close to almost all the way up to the armpit. Maybe a little more. Okay, so all the way up there. And so now under Edit Mesh, I'm going to choose Duplicate Face. And so when I go to my Outliner, now what I'll see is I'll see a top level group with the name of the original arm. And then I'll actually see, if I expand it, I'll see two pieces of new geometry. Uh, the first one's actually your original arm. And even if it's referenced, you should be able to rename it here. So I'm just going to call that one arm right. And then I have my new duplicate, or my extracted duplicate. Now the extracted duplicate is still going to be connected into the history of the original arm, which is what you want. Because the original arm is actually bound to the skeletal structure. So when it moves, this duplicate will deform to correspond with its changes. So I'm going to call this one, uh, I'm going to call it arm ghost01. <coughs> Excuse me. And now, while I still have that selected, instead of making another duplicate, because I, I need yet another copy of the arm that's actually going to follow along, I'm going to make an instance of my duplicate. So under edit, Duplicate Special option box. We can go in and choose Geometry Type as Instance. I'm going to parent it uh, to the under the world, not to the other arm, and we'll just have it duplicate. Okay, so now I have my duplicate of that arm. I'm just going to middle mouse it and drop it into the same group here, just for now. So now we have both arms, one and two, and now we need to create some control so we can control them outside of just having them follow. Now this is where it got really complicated in the original tutorial. Instead of actually creating a whole series of groups to control it, I'm just going to do something that's a little more visually accessible to the animator within the workspace. I'm going to create a couple of NURBS curves. So I'll create one. and should create it right near the feet. Let me show curves. Okay, so I have one curve here. I'm going to scale it down a little bit because we don't need the curve this big. I'm just going to call this one my uh, ghost 01. And I'll say right. Let's just name it right away and get it out of the way. And I'm going to use the inputs to scale it down. Can use the radius just to scale it down a little bit, or I could just manually scale it. Uh, this way, I don't have to freeze transformations on it. I can just scale it down, delete the history, and then we just have the curve at its default size. And now, with the, most rigs, you might, depending on how your rig is built, you will want to have this control st uh, stay aligned with your shoulder, but you're going to want it to parent to your shrug. Uh, in this case I actually have a double shoulder joint so instead of parenting it to my shrug I'm going to parent directly to the shoulder joint here because it's actually controlling 
the shoulder joint that's actually bound to the mesh. So I can parent my control curve to it, and then I should be able to zero out everything here, and it'll bring the curve directly to the joint. And then I can rotate it about 90 degrees in the Z. It's going to depend on the orientation, but I'm rotating it just to a better angle for selection and to be seen. I want it to rotate it to a good angle, I can freeze it. I'm going to duplicate it now, so I'll have a second copy. I have two arms, so I actually need two extra controls. Okay, so now I have Ghost 1 and Ghost 2. Now Ghost 2, I'm going to take that one and I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. And this is just so that it's uh, easy to differentiate from Ghost 1. So now I can see each curve separately and I can select them separately easier than I could previously. This is also so I don't have to keep going back to the outliner to make selections when uh, I actually animate anything. Okay, so these are both in place. Freeze both of them. And now I'm going to take Ghost Arm 1 I'll select it from the outliner. If the lag ever lets me do it. Shift select the corresponding curve. And then I just P for parent. And then do the same thing for my arm goes to goes to goes to control here. Parent that one to it. Okay, so now I should be able to offset the arm just so you can see it. So this one's goes to and is ghost number one. So I'm going to offset these just a little bit. And I'll shade those in. So now as you can see, you have three arms. So now if I take my uh, IK arm control, and I move the arm, you see they all move together. And when I take my K, my pull vector control. Okay, so our duplicate arms are responding to everything that the original arm does. Now to actually get the uh, the transparency, I've actually set up a couple of extra shaders. And so all you have to do is apply those other shaders for your more transparent skin tones. Of course, you'll have to make those, which you can easily do just by duplicating whatever shader you're using for the skin currently, or creating uh, a different shader for each arm with a different level of uh, transparency turned on for it. So uh, that's basically it for creating. So instead of animating both the Ghost 1 and Ghost 2 manually, what you can do is you can set up a constraint so that the Ghost tool will automatically try to average the uh, position between essentially the original and your Ghost 1. So we'll take, we'll select Ghost 1 and I'm going to select the joint that I'm using to anchor everything to. So not the shoulder joint but the my shoulder root joint or in your case the clavicle. And then the last selection is going to be the Ghost 2. And then I do a constraint, and I'm going to do an orange constraint. And you can do the orange constraint maintaining offset if you want to, or not. It just depends on what the orientation of your control curves and your joints are. So once it's actually applied, you should be able to just select ghost number one. And basically ghost number two should try to average between it automatically. Or you could do it the other way around and actually have ghost number one averaging between ghost number the default uh, joint structure and ghost number two. So as you can see, it's actually working perfectly. And you could even set up a little control to control visibility. So if you, let's say, selected both of your IK arm selections, 
want to modify and add attribute you can do a sort of a visibility control if you use enum you'll actually get a uh, you can actually set up an on and off switch so you can just type in let's say ghost or ghost arm or whatever you want to type uh, add it in as and then come down to the enum names and change green to off change blue to on and then click on add to add it and whatever control curves you have selected, I have both selected, so it'll add it to both of them at the same time. As you can see, I've already added one in, so it says ghost on, that's why you can see them right now. And then to actually connect them to control the visibility, you want to bring up window, component editor, connection editor, uh, under general editors. Or you can actually uh, bring it up by going control click, right click in your channels box and you'll get an option for connection editor. So once it's loaded up, you have your IK arm controls loaded. Reload the left side, it'll load up your controls, and you'll see all the attributes for it. Make sure that you do not, do not select uh, show non keyable, because you just need to see the readable only. Okay? So in this case, we have ghost and ghost. Alright? And now to make the connection, we need to actually connect, uh, select our control curves because they're actually anchoring the geometry this way we can actually disable the visibility of both the geo and the controls with a single click so you can reload the right side and then make the appropriate connection so in this case arm left we need to connect the ghost to control the visibility for the ghost controls on the left arm and that will be ghost and then you just click on visibility until it highlights blue like this and do the same for the right arm, ghost, and then our ghost right controls, same thing, visibility. Okay, so now when you come in here, you can actually select your IK arm control or wherever you decide to throw the attribute, and you can actually turn your ghosting on and off at will. Okay, so that's my basic tutorial uh, for doing ghost arms.